Hey guys, Terp with High Plains Prospectors here. I wanted to do a quick video about a new product that we have. And it is from the same company that provides us our Renaissance wax. And this is a metal decorroder. And I've used this before on an old brass cattle tag that I had. And it turned out phenomenal. Finally got it in in larger quantities. We'll be selling it in smaller quantities uh, on our website, highplainsprospectors.com. This stuff works phenomenal. I found this uh, old Civil War era what is a cinch, similar to a D-ring buckle you'd see on a cinch for a saddle. And as I was digging it up, I started kind of picking at it a little bit. You know, this really doesn't have a lot of monetary value, but it has kind of a historical value to me. I found an old ghost town here in Kansas. And I started looking closer at it and realized that this thing was a beautiful, shiny brass at one time. And although it's kind of cool to leave things in their natural state, how you found them, I really wanted to see this thing get shined up. So I'm going to use it as an example of how well this decorroder works. So step one, basically put it in a plastic container. The cool thing about this stuff is it doesn't harm the underlying metal, but it breaks the bond between the corrosion or the patina that is on the piece and doesn't affect the bare metal beneath it. And you can leave it in there for as short a period as you want, or you can leave it in there for several days without it affecting the underlying metal. So it's really phenomenal stuff. I know personally it works really well. I'm gonna just show you guys the before and after of how well this stuff works. So I'm gonna just pour it in here. I just wanna cover just above the highest point of the piece. Now the other cool thing about this is you can actually reuse this stuff. Um, it'll turn the the uh, corrosion that's on top of it into a sludge that you can just really just kind of brush off pretty easily. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to leave this in there for a day or two in order to get to the bottom of this because this stuff is pretty thick. I can even hardly chisel it off of there. Um, but uh, you can actually reuse this stuff, put it back in the container, kind of clean out some of the sludge, uh, put the clean stuff back in another container and reuse it several times. So pretty handy. You know, you can get a small bottle like this, reuse it on several objects a few times. It's a really awesome product. We're glad to have. I think you guys are going to be excited to see what this turns into. All right, so this has been soaking in the metal decorroder. This is a brass piece off of a saddle, and you can see already, it's pretty impressive. Let me try to Get the glare out of here. You want me to hold it? This sludge is just really wiping off of this. This stuff works so good. This thing's going to look good whenever I get done with it. I'm probably going to let it sit overnight and then come in and check it out tomorrow. See what all we can get off of it. But I might sit here and scrape a little off for now so it can get in contact with the patina that is below the surface. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Can't wait to see this thing when it's done. Okay, so I uh, came over here today uh, to look at how well my brass buckle was doing soaking in this metal decorator from uh, Renaissance. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed thus far. This had a layer of gunk on it, patina, everything that was, I couldn't get off with a wire brush uh, or with, even with a Dremel tool. And I know people are like, why are you cleaning that? Well, it's my find and I want it, I want it to be shiny. So <laughs> I decided I'm going to do that. Um, so this is one day, I'm going to probably give it one more day with some fresh solution, but I wanted to show you, this is kind of the sludge that has come off of this and it's, it's pretty solid looking. I don't know if you can really tell, but, uh, it pulled a lot of stuff off there. I'm gonna give it one more day in there of fresh solution, kind of see what else I can get off of there, and then we'll see what the next step is to get this thing cleaned up. Pour my fresh solution in there. I'm just gonna go right over the top of it. There should be plenty. I didn't want to reuse that last solution because it was pretty nasty. I think this one is gonna be a lot cleaner when it's done. So I can actually take this solution, try to pour off whatever sludge comes out of it into another container, then I can reuse it later on.
So it's got a it's got a lifespan to it, um, even after using it. As long as you can get the sludge away from it, that last one will be hopeless to try to separate the sludge from the solution because there was so much sludge. All right, we'll check it out tomorrow. All right, day two of my cinch buckle soaking in the Renaissance decorroder. And you can see the last little bits of this corrosion is wiping right off. So I'll take this out, get a little bit better look at it, clean it up a little bit more, kind of see what the end result's going to be on this thing. So far I'm pleased. I like what it's looking like. And that is relatively clean solution that's left, so I'll be able to put that in a container and reuse it. So the next step, once you pull it out of the solution, is to take it in and rinse it off in water. And this stuff is totally safe to be sent down the drain. And the water kind of deactivates it. All right, so I am working on this thing. I kind of got it a little bit better how I wanted it. But I think that there's some pretty major corrosion going on here that I'm going to have to physically take off. So luckily at our shop... We have a lot of different relic restoration tools, wire brushes, fiber, fiberglass, graphite brushes, all kinds of pencils and whatnot you can clean with. And I uh, kind of started on this one, and I'm liking what I'm seeing thus far. You know, I want to get it down to where I know that there's good shiny brass. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I just did a little bit, and it's coming out nicely, so... I'm going to keep working on this thing, and I'll show you what the finished product is whenever I'm done. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Alright, so I've spent oh, probably about 30 minutes to 45 minutes brushing this, and this is what it looks like before I spent that time on it. And that's what it's looking like after. It's exactly what I was trying to accomplish to get it back to its original brass. So using the decorroder to get past the first layer, and I'll show you a before and after picture of this thing, and then using a physical method, which is wire brushes, to get past this what I call basically like a brass rod or something like that to get down to the shiny brass. This thing's gonna look awesome when I get done with it. It's already looking pretty cool. So I got tired of brushing it by hand. I figured I would uh, go ahead and step it up a little bit and use the Dremel. I figured it'd be kind of cool to show how it works with taking this stuff off. <laughs> immediately just polishes it. You can see it takes it down to the original brass. Kind of speeds it up a little bit using a power tool. All right, so I figured I would show the progress of it. After taking the Dremel tool, getting right about where I want to be with it. Unfortunately, the bristles on my Dremel shot, and it's the last one I have, so I think the rest of it I'll just have to do by hand. But it's turned out exactly how I wanted it to. Pretty kick-ass. All right, so yeah, this thing turned out really nice. Um, pleased with how it turned out. I actually started to do a wrap up before I finished probably one of the most important parts of this restoration. So what I'm gonna do now is 
take it in <clears throat> to the sink and use just a little light soap to get all the oils for my fingers and whatnot off of here. And then I'm gonna take it and put some Renaissance wax on it. This is a micro crystalline wax polish that is used in museums and uh, restoration of relics and antiques all over the world. Um, we sell it at our website, highplainsprospectors.com. Um, really good product for preserving things like this and preventing any further corrosion. So I'm gonna go wash it and put some of that on there. So all I'm gonna do with this Renaissance wax, and a little goes a long ways, is put a fine coat all over this thing, and it'll help preserve it from future corrosion, and it'll also maintain the luster of the metal piece that you're putting it on. It really does not take a lot of this stuff. And you can reapply it periodically, you know, every year or so if you want to, in order to help preserve your items. But, like I said, a little goes a long ways. Now I'll keep my gloves on as I put this thing in the display case that I've chosen for it. Really pleased with how that turned out. Look at that. All right, guys. So this uh, little relic restoration venture has gone way better than I thought it was going to. I'm going to show you guys a before and after picture. But I thought this turned out awesome. I mean, it's, you know, it's pitted. You can see some of the pitting in it because it's been underground for 150 years, but what can you expect from, from Mother Nature taking its toll on metal? But um, using some of the relic cleaning products and chemicals that we have, this thing turned out better than I could have ever expected. And I'll show you some of the tools that we used. Um, a couple of them, you know, obviously just wire brushes worked really well after I put it in the decoroder in order to get that layer of uh, thick crustiness off of it um, and then I was able to take the Dremel tool to it until I wore my brush out there and then I had to take the wire brush to it by hand. Nice thing about these little wire brushes is you can get in to the tight crevices where you can't with some other things. Um, some of the the little pitted areas were a little harder to get into. I was able to use our little fiberglass brush to get in there and get that out. Um, have a little brass brush here too that was able to get in there and get some of the tight spots. A little fiberglass and graphite Andre's pencil, which are really nice to get into like these really tight little nooks and crannies. And finally, one of my favorite relic restoration tools is this, I think it's like a double or triple lot uh, steel wool pencil. And that was how I was able to get this really fine a really bright luster on this piece. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Hopefully you guys can go to our website, www.highplainsprospectors.com and pick up your ultimate relic cleaning kit.